How was that, Miss Pogue? I'm not taking a photograph, Lord Elmsworth. I'm afraid you'll have to hold the pose a little longer. Oh, yes, yes, of course, yes. Uh, 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 totally understood. Oh, sorry, uh, come back, come back. Frederick, oh, oh, this is Miss Vanessa Polk. You'll never guess, but she's an artist. And she's come all the way from, um... San Antonio. Ah, uh -huh, very good, yes, I knew this one. Uh, that's in uh, America. It was when I left it, honey. <laughs> My daddy wrote your own Constance. Before I was born, they used to have a thing. <laughs> She invited me to visit with y'all. Uh, Miss Polk. Uh, God bless America. Specifically Texas. Oh, well, I, I'm sure we have some in the medicine cupboard. What else for us? Oh, oh, yes. oh, come now, come now. I came to tell you about Hannibal. The elephant guy. Uh, sort of, yes. He, he, was, uh, he was playing elephant polo when his father died, so Dukedom went to his brother, Alaric, instead, which put H in a strop, because he wanted to be Hannibal Dunstable, you see. Um, but uh, now he has to be Lord Didcot. Which uh, sounds like something good shout if you dropped a hammer on your foot. Betty huh? did cut the absolute, the absolute ghastly man. Is it worse than his brother? He's pokering the furniture and roaring at the servants. He was, he was here last week. He bullied me into selling him something or other. Thank God he's gone. Well, well no, he, he hasn't. Yes. He's back. No. Where's the Ronnie Butler? And another thing. Calypso surprised. See it? It is a fate. Bronzino, my Aunt Fanny. Look, it's signed by Cosy somebody. Yeah. Oh, bless my soul. Never mind your soul, Emsworth. I bought it off you for 50 quid. And I want my money back. Hannibal! Whatever is all this choice? Connie, I've been conned. And I'm not leaving this ruddy house. Oh. Till I have justice! Uh, uh. Morning all. It's a lovely morning. It's a pitch. Where is Peach? I mean, Beach. He's on holiday, Governor. Oh, did I really sell Beatty Didcot a painting of Pinocchio despised? Beach, you know. I think you'll find it on holiday. If you ask me, Animal's losing what remains of his marbles. Mm. Galahad, we did not ask you. What are you doing here? I'm useful in a crisis. Mm. What crisis? Hannibal's off his nut. Oh, for heaven's sakes! Lord Didcot is merely eccentric. It's the living alone in that enormous house and the ridiculous feud with Alaric. All he needs is a capable woman to marry him and sort him out, which is the reason I have invited Miss Polk. What? <laughs> Dear Vanessa, I heard voices. Oh, it happens to me all the time. <laughs> Let us go somewhere less congested. Yes. Leave it now. Leave it. It's too very, very kind of you to indulge Clarence by painting his pig. I mean, you really mustn't take much trouble. Oh, it's no trouble. I like to paint. <laughs> now, we have, staying with us, a very old family friend, Lord Didcot. I mean, one knows so many peers, but he is really rather special. you smile. Your nephew? Uh, what has Freddie said exactly? That Mr. Didcote was an old walrus in trousers five sizes too small for his upper thighs. Yes, well, unfortunately, Freddie was dropped on his head. Oh, how terrible. Yes, it will be. I mean, it's true. Lord Didcote is of a certain age and also has a, a conservative manner. The latter of which could be changed by a woman say, the daughter of a very old and dear friend. To do what? But Hannibal's estate, on which he lives alone, is considerably bigger than Blanding's. Do you follow? I guess. Good. And I think it'd be wise not to address him as Mr. Didcot. OK. Furthermore, my room has no poker. Yes, good point. Where, where is Beach? He's on holiday. Is he? Nobody tells me anything. Ah, uh, Hannibal, I should like you to meet Miss Polk. Pleased to meet you, Lord Ditko. Gad, a damned colonial. Miss Polk is the daughter of J.B. Polk of Polk Furnishings. 
Can't abide a woman in yellow, also much too tall. Carry on, let's see the geography of the house. Pook, a single woman and many times a millionaires. Here we are. Let me show you the West Wing. We'll go through the dining room into the conservatory. Clarence, I've been here five minutes, and you haven't taken me to see the Empress. Oh, my dear fellow, I do apologize. Come, come. Ooh, the most exciting news. She's having her portrait painted. Ah, uh, uh, touching on the subject. Yeah, uh, mirabili dictu, I've got myself into a spot of bother. You see, I was a little flown with wine and was moved to wager cat's meat that I couldn't fit three billiard balls in my mouth and give a tolerable rendition of La Marseillaise. Uh, <laughs> I haven't done that for years. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so now I own a hundred smackers. Uh, oh, no, 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 hang on, God, no, don't use off. I'm not on the sponge. I have here... A crash-hot commodity. Pointless asking me about money, Frederick. Your, your mother was the man for all that. Come, come on. But I, 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 I'm totally strapped for the necessary rhino. Oh. Oh, uh, um, Lord Didcot? Yeah. I am uh, come into possession of this rather splendid picture uh, of a horsey. You, you may wish to purchase it? Get out of my way. I want to purchase Vanessa What's-Her-Face. And I'm not finished with Emsworth. Yeah. Lord Emsworth, can you look at her like you know she's boss? Oh, she is boss. Um, uh, thus. All right, we're off to the races. Races, Emsworth? You're not thinking of entering that? Ruddy pig in the derby again. Heard about that from me brother. <laughs> God rotten damn his ruddy soul. Is this having that picture done, you goon? What? It's kind of a marriage portrait. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, good God. If there's a fatuous conclusion to be leapt to, you'll leap to it. Yeah. This is yet another instance of Emsworth's egregious pottiness and mendacity. Don't think you can get away from me by slithering off to be with your porcine floozy. <laughs> Miss Polk, look at this ruddy piece of junk he made me buy. Did you ever see such an outrageous fake? Rooked me rotten. Uh, I'm hanging the damn thing where it belongs. Now, Miss Polk. <laughs> You're a bit of a dolly, aren't you? Will you excuse me? I just have to not talk to you. Today's cock, Hannibal. Tomorrow's feather duster. the most unpleasant specimen. Oh, dreadful. Now, apart from baited didcot, Miss Polk, how do you like blandings? I like it just fine. I expect you're accustomed to far superior plumbing, food, transportation and teeth. Oh, I'm not unacquainted with hardship. Really? I wonder why. I knew your father. He's a very good egg, old JB. But he never had a moment's hardship in his life. <laughs> never had a daughter, either. So, OK. Do I pack my bag? No, oh, don't be preposterous. No, tell me your secret, Vanessa. Is your name really Vanessa? With Vanessa Gruber. Enchanted. Oh, <laughs> Jay behind me to paint his portrait. We got on pretty well. I was a little down in the dumps at the time, so he fixed me this trip to England to have some fun. Let's tell my old pal Connie I'm your daddy. He said she'll lap you up. My dear, would I be close to the mark in assuming you haven't got two beans to your name? Well, I play a little blackjack to keep the quieter from the door, but I dropped a packet in Pasadena. I'm broke, Gally. Sad to hear it, but join the club. Hmm. Listen, there's something bothering me. My animal magnetism. <laughs> Don't be alarmed, I'll switch it off. Now. <laughs> Sit here and tell me your troubles. That picture, the one that foolish man threw away, it's the real thing. Good God, it must be worth a fortune. A you pair? Hundreds of thousands. Let us continue this fascinating conversation outside. 
too many hairy old ears in these walls. Hundreds of thousands. She's only just arrived, and already your uncle has her cornered. I suppose you admire that. Frederick, what do you want? I wanted to propose to you. Um, um, make you a proposition. Well, as long as it's got nothing to do with painting art or artists, because I've had a basin for them. Well, how interesting that fine art should be the sujet du jour, because I happen to have here this rather glorious picture of a horsey. Go out there and tell your uncle I need to speak to him at once. Damn right. We need to talk. Oh, phooey. Uh, I, I refuse to discuss with you with the likes of Polk. No intention of discussing the female I plan to cart off from this dump. I'm talking about art. Uh, ha. Art. Scarcely a subject for this turpentine community. No, the Philistine community. My boy. Um, Aunt Constance would like... Aunt can wait. What about this dismal crash at Didcot? Right. We can't have him bellowing about the place, terrorising your father. Hmm? Now, I ask this rhetorically, but I already have the answer. What do we do? Leave Miss Polk alone? My dear boy, I do believe you hold a torch for her. Excellent. I salute your taste and judgement. It makes it even simpler for us to have our cake and lie in it. Freddy, do you trust me to take charge of your sentimental education? Mm. This is the bit where you say, yes, uncle. Yes, uncle. Good. Here's the plan. Hannibal was proposed to Vanessa tonight. Mm. No, don't move me. I didn't say marry. I said propose. The formal offer is all. To this end, you must make love to Vanessa yourself, assiduously and publicly, right under the twitching nostrils of your aunt. Go to it. Right. Uh, um, have you seen Miss, um... Ah, there she is, Miss Frederick. They get along like a horse on fire. House. Oh it's a conflagration you must stamp out. The whole point of the match was that it should be with Lord Didcot. Well, that's very modern of you, and I'm dare say commendably open-minded, but uh, on Frederick's behalf... Give I... me strength. I'm not suggesting that Freddy should marry Hannibal. Well, I'm glad you've reconsidered. What if they'd been a daughter? She might have had a moustache, a big, roary voice going... Oh, oh, oh. We'll just break it up. Hannibal, 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 Hannibal. I did not make myself clear. It is imperative that you marry Miss Polk. Huh? You'll find the whole arrangement agreeable and convenient. And it'll make you less choleric. I'm not choleric. I'm famous for my ruddy, sunny disposition. Damn and blast you, woman! <laughs> oh, he's useless. Listen to me, Hannibal. I want you to go out there and stop this conversation. What conversation? What? Potty is a hat full of pixies. Huh? Mm. You want to know something on the cutie about Calypso? Do I know a cutie called Calypso? Uh... Ah, Miss Pooch. There you are. Thought you might uh, care to take a stroll. The park here is pretty tawdry compared to mine. It is, it is God. Miss Polk is working. And I call that a damned indignity. Totty like her didn't ought to have to work. God's ruddy trousers, Hemsworth. Blandings is a temple to barbarity. And when are you going to cop up my 50 quid? Well. Just pay him, Clarence. Just pay him. This whole ghastly rigmarole is making me bilious. Get your checkbook. Funny. Mm. 
Uh, where is Beach? Uh, uh, climping. Well, well, does he climp or, or is he being climped? He's on holiday. Oh. Lord Emsworth, mm. we were speaking earlier about the painting in the picture. So, my dear, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh! I'm so sorry, I seem to set my fork into your hands. <laughs> Idiot. Can't even squeeze a girl's knee under the table. Huh? <gasps> a gift from me to you. How do you do that? A new trick I picked up in the Kalahari. Uh, an establishment on Dover Street. Ah. You and I, young man, we uh, share an interest. Not her, you imbecile, the horse. How much do you want for it? Uh, I'll give you half that. Uh, Connie. Hmm? Connie, can we speak? Yes, of course. As long as it's not about art, the whole subject brings me out in hives. Oh, oh, well, well, talk to me, then. Talk to me. About anything. Hives, bees. Once had a bumblebee in a matchbox. Called him Hammy. Always wanted a hamster, you see. You have such beautiful eyes. I'm going to bathe my temples with eau de cologne. Miss Polk must marry Beatty Didcot. I entirely agree. You're scheming. Why? Animals become intolerable. Have you established whether or not the old warthog actually wants to marry her? I'm certain of it. So am I. But he's too self-obsessed, crass and idle to ask. He should trust to the pen. Your pen. Oh, darling. Oh, my God. If you think you can beat me down with that kind of pansy flimflam, then you're savagely mistaken. I'll give you 300 for the piece. Take it or leave it. Didcot, I cannot permit you to describe my beloved as a piece. I'm talking about the ruddy horse, you snivelling amoeba. Uh, uh, I see we're at cross purposes. P purpose. Just shut up and listen. 300. Cash. Damn and blast you, man. Concentrate. Stop thinking about that wretched American girl. She's out of your puny league. Oh, well, we shall discover, Didcot, whose leg is puny. You ready, be fixed. Ah, Beach. Oh. Now, listen to me. I want you to get Hannibal and bring him to my room now. Constance, there, there are limits. Oh, for heaven's sakes, you're such a booby. I can't allow Stop you speaking. To be... I cannot, with propriety, possibly go to his room. You must bring him to mine. I need to dictate to him. Uh, um, did God? Uh, oh, just, just a minute. Where uh, are Did God? <clears throat> I, uh, I. Uh, Oh, dear, what's... Oh, sorry about that. Oh, oh, that's so clumsy. Ah, oh, this looks promising. Did caught I in, in here? Ah! Where are you, you filthy sewer? Ah, did caught. There you are. Um, anything you need? What I need, Emsworth is for you to stop acting the goat in my cupboard. Mm -hmm. How Connie manages to put... Connie, yes, yes, yes. She, she wishes to lord it over you in her bedroom. What? Well, not a precise phrase, but she, she wishes to, uh, to talk to you. Yes, uh, uh, and um, when you've finished with that poker, would you uh, return it to the drawing room, then? There's a good fellow. Nighty night. Yes. Good night. Bon nuit. Uh, bon nuit. Bon nuit. Bon nuit. Now, Hannibal, I'm concerned. You will lay siege to Vanessa in entirely the wrong way. You'll make no progress whatsoever. 
I want you to write a letter <laughs> proposing marriage. What foaming lunacy is this? I've never written a letter in my life. Well, for once, you'll do as you're told. Now sit. Paper, pen. Write thus. My darling angel. Oh, this is bilge. Write it. My darling Priceless. Angel. Priceless. Claude, Claude, come here. Her ladyship has roused you from your bed. You will find that she wishes you to give a letter to Miss Polk. I will relieve you of the burden of this mission. You just give the letter to me. Hmm? I think you may have dropped ten shillings. Hmm? Good man. My last final offer. You drive a hard bargain, Threepwood, and I admire you for it. But if you don't give me the horse, I'm going to smash your face in. Oh, no. I should get it directly. It's in the bin. What's in the bin? Um, nothing. You confuse me, Didcot, with this uh, talk of bins. No, return to your room, and I shall retrieve the horsey from the very special place I wedged it. Left it. Claw, well done. Splendid fellow. What? Nephew. Ah. Is your tender soul ready for part two of your education? Which was the first? Freddy! It is a far, far uh, thing that I do. I shall do it better. Oh, you do it pretty well already, honey. <laughs> <laughs> We agreed 500 big ones, I believe. <laughs> huh. uh, <clears throat> now, Didcot, att attend me well. I'm in possession of your letter to Miss Polk. <coughs> and, and I happen to know that she is not a millionaire's daughter. <gasps> She's an impostress, even impostrix. She is penniless. <clears throat> but naturally, you will honour your written offer of marriage? Bring me a poker. I shall not. I want to drag out your intestines like spaghetti. Mm. Mm. Well, well, what you want, Didcot, and what you get are two mutually extruding elephants. Ele mm. Now, now, if you don't marry Miss Polk, you will be in breach of promise and vilified as an utter stoat. So, so my advice to you, therefore, is to pay the lady off. Mm. I am content to broker the transaction. And I recommend cash. Now, the sum of 500 has a familiar weight. and market alpha plus. Now, shall I help you with the arithmetic? Oh, please. 100 quid to cat's meat, uh, 10 bob for me. Um, that leaves 899 pounds. 10? How much has your father been subbing you over the years? Oh, Call I... it 500. I want you to go and give it to him. Now, the rest you must blow on Vanessa. Whisk her back to London and buy her a slap up dinner and dance in the pink pussy every night this week. Oh, uh, Uncle Galley? Yes. When I grow up, 
Can I be like you? Who knows, my boy? We can but guide you thither. If the sun shines on you in youth, you grow up knowing it's been put there for that express purpose. Oh. Ah, Governor. Right. Oh. Ah. Brace yourself. Something very extraordinary is about to happen. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. Right. hallucinating, or did you just come into my bedroom and give me a vast amount of money? Governor, I did. Are you sure it wasn't the other way around? No, no. How extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa, good morning. I trust you slept after the disturbances of the evening. Oh, I slept like a hare rubair. <laughs> you weren't disturbed again. There's someone delivering a letter. Morning. Uh, Whatever has gone wrong, Galahad, I blame you. Perfectly reasonable and entirely expected. Now, hear this. Vanessa, if you have beans, spill them now. Oh, farewell. Freddy, that small pitcher in oil, of a horse. Oh, Lord, don't say he wanted. I just flogged it to Hannibal for 500 quid. What? Oh, I never wanted it. I knew when I painted it the other day that it was garbage. That's why I threw it in a trash can in Green Park. That is where you found it. Outstanding. But this is the good bit, Clarence. What? That picture of Calypso, sir. It's by Agnolo de Cosimo. Because who? The painter generally known as Bronzino. Oh, I've got a Bronzino. Yeah, there's a chubby girl lolling about on a lilo. Do you know it, Connie? Oh, God. Yes, Lord Emsworth. It's worth a very great deal of money indeed. Oh, well, I never. On a subject of money, I have to come clean. I am not J.B. Polk's daughter. I am not a millionaire -ess. Fact is, I'm pretty much a bum. Oh, uh, not entirely sure that word translates. Uh, bum. Clarence, here's the situation. Yes. Hannibal has paid a fortune for a pile of codswallop. No offense, Vanessa. And Sotheby's is about to brain his face. You, on the other hand, have a very nice picture of a roly-poly popsy worth untold gold. I'd say it's time to burst Joy's grape against our palate. <laughs> Fine. Absolutely. Hurrah! Whose grape? Uh, Joy's. Joy, you are most welcome at Blandings, my dear. Oh, well, thank you, Lord Emsworth. <laughs> I am going to my room. Oh, are you, Connie? As you wish. We shall miss you. Anyone seen Beach? 